Now, how do we know about all of this? How do we know that the earth, uh, the earth is like that? Well, we do field observations. We actually take samples of lava and we learn about the way the lava is and how it works. And by studying lava, we can actually understand the materials the magma is made of, what kind of materials it picks up as it rises to the top and joins to make new kinds of lava. And, and we learn about lava and we can learn about that. But field observations are limited because you're only looking at the magma by the time it reaches the surface. So you can also take samples of lava which are fresh from the core, from, from the volcano and, and are basically samples coming from the inner earth. Sometimes you will have within the lava rocks which are toughened and didn't really melt and it came from deeper into the ground. And you have all these different kinds of things and geologists are constantly getting into danger. It's a very fun profession. It's a crazy profession to be in and to get those lava samples. You can also learn a lot about lava and magma by studying solidified lava, which is called igneous rock. As you see some examples of these kinds of igneous rock here on the screen. And you can also replicate the conditions of the core inside the laboratory. You get a furnace, you put a piece of rock in, in, in the center of the furnace, you, you, you put that rock under a rod that puts the rock under pressure, and you can change that pressure so you can, mo you, you can model the increase in temperature through the furnace and the increase in pressure through the rods, which are forcing weight on top of the sample. And then you can replicate what happens with temperature and pressure on, on, as you go deeper into the earth. And then you can also wet that sample to replicate what happens with that. And by repeating these experiments many, many times, we can do predictions, uh, like you see on the left here, about what happens. So each circle that you see in the picture represents an experiment that was conducted with different combinations of pressure, wetness, temperature, all the factors that leads rock to actually melt. And then you end up getting this curve that you can use to predict what, at what temperature does the rock melt, depending on the composition of the sample, the actual mixture that you have, the wetness, the pressure, or the temperature. And so that's how we found out that increasing water makes it easier to melt. Changing the composition makes it different to melt. Changing the, the mixture makes it, makes it different to melt. Uh, increasing pressure makes it harder to melt. Increasing temperature makes it easier to melt. And so all of these points that represent equivalent points on the lines of the graph that we saw before. And that's how we actually study magma. Now, now that we understand the conditions on which magma actually forms, we can actually understand why there's different kinds of lava. There's different kinds of lava and different kinds of, of rock because magma will form under different conditions, sometimes under high pressure, sometimes under low pressure, sometimes the composition might change, the water level might change, the gases in it might change. And so as you change the composition, you're going to change the formation of these things. And the other thing that's interesting is that different materials will melt at different temperatures. And so you have what's called the Bohr reaction series. And this is, that has to do with the two scientists that did those laboratory studies. One of them is called Tuttle and the other one is called Bowen. And by studying these things, they actually discovered that materials of different uh, composition will melt at different temperatures and different pressures and form different kinds of lava. And, and so as you go deeper into the earth, you have different kinds of lava forming with some areas of overlap between the, the two kinds of lava. So you have olivine forming near the, at a really extremely high temperatures, then you have peroxine forming after that, and then different kinds of magma and so forth. Now you don't need to know all this kind of detail, you just need to know that different kinds of lava will form at different conditions. And we do go over this in more detail when we talk about igneous rocks later in the lecture series, okay? But the general idea here is that Let's say, for example, you have a bunch of stuff in the, in the lava. So you have all these different chemicals. So um, you have two kinds of elements. One element is in red, one element is in yellow. So let's say you start with a point where 50% of the, of, the, of the rock is made of one, 50% of the rock is made of the other, and all this rock is melted. As this rock starts to cool, okay, and we call this, by the way, fractional crystallization, different parts of the rock have different melting points or different uh, solidification points. And so if the yellow crystals have a higher melting point, they also have a higher solidification point. So they will be the first ones to crystallize. And so as the crystals start to form, at first the majority of the crystals will be more yellow than red, which will change the composition of the magma to become the magma, that's the part that's melted, 
will be more red than yellow. And you see that's happening over here, right? While the crystals will be more yellow than red. That's because the yellow solidifies first. Then, if you keep going with this, you're going to make that even more pronounced. All right? By the time you cool down the rock even more, and you have half, half the rock is melted, and 50% of the rock is solidified into crystals, more, way more. Of, of the yellow would have become in crystals and so you're gonna have a lot more yellow than red on the crystals and a lot more red than yellow on the lava and so lava that forms at different temperatures will have different materials on it and that's the idea of fractional crystallization okay the same thing is true about the opposite rocks will melt at different temperatures and so uh, maybe some rocks will melt when the temperatures are not very high and so you see that those rocks will come, will, will, will decrystallize. But then as the temperature increases, different materials will decrystallize. And some materials will still be left behind, you notice. And then by the end, uh, when it's very, very hot, only the more resistance of the materials are still crystals. The rest is already solidified. So as the rock heats up, you have the opposite of the crystallization. The tougher materials will actually resist the melting longer. And that magma is going to have a greater... Uh, ratio of the materials which were easier to melt and that's called partial melting uh, and so it's the opposite and that's why you get the reaction series that we talked about different pieces of elements will actually or minerals will melt at different temperatures so as you go deeper into the earth and the temperature is getting higher and higher and the pressure is getting different and different you're going to have different kinds of lava at first you're going to have lava which is mostly made up of the materials which melt first then you're going to have lava that's made up of the materials which melt later and later and later and, 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 and so forth. And so the composition of the lava will change as you go deeper and deeper. And the opposite is true as the, the rock is forming as you go cool, it's cooling more and more. The rock will form at different stages and different kinds of rock will form higher and higher because different cooling or, fra or fractional crystallization will take in place. So either way you look at it, it will explain the reaction series that Bohm was talking about. Okay, lava will also be different because as the, the crystals solidify, they will fall to the bottom of the chamber or get, get trapped to the, on the walls of the chamber, which means the middle of the chamber was going to be made of the stuff that didn't crystallize yet. So the first stuff to crystallize will be around the bottom and the outside. Then the middle will be made of something else, and then something else, and then something else. So it's actually funny. Because of this crystal crystallization, you're going to have a rock that kind of like has layers. The, the outside of the magma chamber will be made of one type of material. Then the inside of another type, and then the inside of another type, because each crystal will form at different points, right? Now, magma will also change because as it rises and melts, it will melt the rock that's around it. So, and you can see that kind of here on the, and as it melts the rock that's around it, it assimilates the materials from that rock into the magma. So that will cause the magma to change as well. Also, sometimes one magma chamber mixes with another, which will change the magma and will mix them all up. And so, fractional crystallization, partial melting, magma assimilation, which is assimilating the rocks around it, and magma mixing, which is mixing of two different magma chambers, can cause different kinds of magma to form all over the place, right? So we learned a lot about magma, and I hope you understand it. Watch it again, ask me questions if you don't understand, and good luck. I'll see you in the next video where we actually start talking about volcanoes.